We want to stay on this topic. We're bringing in William Yeck now. He's a geophysicist with the U.S. Geological Survey. William, good to have you here with us. So give us some context here. If you're not one that lives on the West Coast accustomed to earthquakes and earthquake drills, how rare is it for an earthquake like this of this magnitude to hit the Northeast? Yeah, it's not very common. I mean, as you mentioned, the West Coast, where you're close to a plate boundary, uh, people are used to feeling earthquakes all the time. Out on the East Coast, it's not very common. We have had larger earthquakes. People might remember the Mineral Virginia earthquake in 2011. That was a magnitude 5.8. But one thing with earthquakes on the East Coast is because of the geology in the region, uh, the seismic waves propagate much further. So people can feel them further away. So earthquakes like this just become very widely felt. Yeah, that's really interesting because we're talking about Boston, people in obviously New York, but the epicenter was there in, I think, Lebanon, New Jersey. Initially a 4.8, they downgraded a little bit, now it's back up. I know no one can predict aftershocks, but typically if there is an aftershock, is it a lower magnitude than the original quake? Yeah, that's typical. And we do model aftershocks. So if you go to our, our website at earthquake.us.gov, you can actually see the aftershock forecast for this specific event. So right now, our expectation is that an earthquake of a similar size, magnitude four and larger, there's about a 16% chance of that occurring the next week. So there's a small chance that that is possible. But you know, typically for aftershock sequences, the aftershocks are smaller. And in this case, you know, there may be felt aftershock, but we don't expect them to be um, numerous like you would for a very, very large earthquake. That is definitely good news. And so far, no major injuries or any injuries that we know of at this point or major damage. Talk a little bit about uh, the preparation. Obviously, you know, earthquakes are on our mind after what happened in Taiwan. What are we, what are our buildings like here on the East Coast in terms of retrofitting bridges the same? Yes, I mean, we have hazard modeling that we perform at the USGS. So we have uh, a model that we put out frequently and update that is what our expected shaking is in specific regions. So buildings are, there's code specific to different regions of this shaking that we'd expect for those regions. And for folks in terms of inspecting their homes, as we heard Governor Hochul say, they are masters of disaster here in New York. But on an individual homeowner or building dweller level, what should you be doing at this point after a 4.8 quake? Yeah, I think one thing to keep in mind is that after you feel an earthquake, you know, there are chances for aftershocks. So you should know what to do if there is an earthquake. And that we tell people to drop cover and hold on. So um, if you go again to the event page for this event, you can find some details uh, in the aftershock forecast that tell you exactly what to do in case you feel an earthquake. But yeah, just, you know, what the governor mentioned in terms of checking the house is useful. All right, drop cover and hold on. Research geophysicist for the U.S. Geological Survey, William Yeck. William, thanks for your time this afternoon. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.